right, so we know that right now is the Christmas season, but it's going to be over in about two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. And so New Year's is coming up soon. And so in this new year, we want to make some commitments to relationships. And we want to make sure that our relationships are ready, that they're healthy. And so we're going to go over just three keys tonight. And our first key is we have to have the Holy Spirit to do this. Second key is we need to learn how to forgive. And the last one we're going to cover tonight is we need to learn how to communicate. And we're going to dive into our first one. And that one is, key number one is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to love each other the way we should. The way we should. And the way we should is when we have the Holy Spirit, we have God's results, not just our results. I want to read a, a scripture here. It's in Ezekiel 36, 26 and 27. It says, I'm going to give you a new heart. Yay, we get a new heart, yes. right? And I'm going to give you a new spirit within all of your deepest parts. I'll remove that hard, rock hard heart that, that is yours, the one that you have, and I'll replace it with the one that's sensitive to me. I'll place my spirit within you, empowering you to live according to my regulations and keep my just decrees. God is saying, through his Holy Spirit, that he is going to give you a new heart. Now, this is for the believers, the ones that ask, Lord, I want a new heart. I can't do this on my own. I've already messed it all up, but I need a healthy relationship. And so part of it is I need the Holy Spirit. And he is the one that's going to empower me to know how to do things right with the right spirit. And so you have anything? Yeah, you know, the, the, we're talking about three keys to have a healthy relationship. One is the Holy Spirit. Yes. It's the it's the Spirit of God. He said, give us a new heart, yes. but and then he'll put his, uh, give us a new spirit, yes. which we're talking about the Spirit of God. Now, the Spirit of God is the Spirit, it's, it's the Spirit of love. Yes. And what God, when we have the Spirit of God, this is what, what God is saying. I'm going to prepare you to have healthy and strong relationships. And he's going to give us his Spirit in order to give us the ability to have relationships that the world cannot have. Hmm. Now, it happens when he makes us, make, gives us a new heart, and he also gives us a new spirit. Right, and we can't do it without him. Right. We really can't. Right. All right, we go to, we're going to go to insight, uh, our first insight. It says, God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When our hearts are full of his love, we have the ability to love like him. So it's not just any love. It's not the world's love that he is going to give us, but it is his love. And that makes all the difference. His love is unconditional. His love is unlimited. And so when my love, you know, my love may have a measure. And then at that point, oh, I'm just done with them or I'm done with him, right? But that's not God's kind of love. It's unlimited. So I can't depend on my love. I have to depend on God's love that he's filled me with. And then it's unlimited. And it's also unconditional. So let's read this scripture, Romans 5, 5. It talks about when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, what does he fill our heart with? Let's read the scripture. Okay. It's Romans 5, 5. It says, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how clearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. It's so good. We, he fills us with his love. Yeah. And that's what we need. And, and so you can't see, we have to be careful because we as believers, we, we, we shouldn't say something like this. I don't love you anymore. Because the truth is our love runs out like that. But God's love doesn't run out like that. Right. God's love is unconditional and it continues to love even though we act unloving. This is the kind of love that we need to have successful and healthy relationships. So the Holy Spirit gives us, fills our hearts with love. So that means every single one of us can love even what looks like an unlovable person. Mm. But the, also the Holy Spirit gives us an ability to walk like Christ mm -hmm. or display the character of Christ. Yeah. Today, what I want to talk to you in this, so, so, so talking about the Holy Spirit, 
But I want to just talk about two lists. Say it with me. List number one and list number two. Every one of us are born with a character list. And the Bible talks about that first list is called the sinful nature. Now, what, I'm going to go through the list in just a minute. And then I'm going to go through the first list. And then I'm going to go through the second list. The second list is called the fruit of the Spirit. And that means that a believer has two lists to choose from. Now, the first list, the sinful nature, or what we call the flesh, doesn't produce the attributes or the characters or the character to have a healthy relationship. Right. The second list is a relationship builder. The first list is a relationship destroyer. So when I bring in couples into counseling, um, most of the time they think we have a marriage problem. And I'll say, yes, you do have a marriage problem, but this is what you have. You have a flesh problem. And if we would fix, if we would, if we would walk in the spirit, this is what would happen. We would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So let's go over the first list. And I'm asking you at home and that are watching, I'm asking you a question. Which list do you think is better to produce, I mean, to produce a healthy relationship? Let's look at list number one. And it's called the sinful nature list of the relationship destroyer list. In Galatians 5.19 says this. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. And I want you to get this. We're born with this list. You don't have to work on this list. It's just natural. <laughs> Sexual morality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. So what it's saying is, I didn't even mention them all. Wow. <laughs> Let me tell you again, as I've done before, that anyone living that sort of life or that sort of list will not inherit the kingdom of God. And all it's saying is, if that list is dominant in our life, we will not see God's results. And the worst thing about it, we will not see God if this list is controlling our lives. But I just look at this, quarreling. Let's look at this list for just a, a second. Are you always fighting, quarreling, arguing? If that's what's happening, it's saying that this list is dominating your life. I thank God there is another list. Now, if you're just, if, you just, if, if you're not saved yet, when anybody that you don't have the Holy Spirit, all you have is this list. And just think about it. People are in relationships every single day. And this is why relationships don't work because all they have is this nature. So they don't even have another option. This is it. They don't have another choice. They could try to act out the other list, but they could never be that list. <laughs> right. Right. So jealousy. You used is there to deal with that. I used to have that list. I used to work that list. As a Christian, used to work it. <laughs> I used to work that jealousy thing, right? Yes. I was asking questions and where the were you? And, and did you ever love anybody besides me? That was crazy stuff, right? Crazy. But that was the wrong list. And what was it doing to our relationship? It was destroying it. Destroying me. It was yeah. destroying you. Yes. Jealousy so, is a, ooh. Yeah. So it's a relationship destroyer, but it's also a people destroyer. Yeah. But look at this. Outbursts of anger. All of a sudden, you just blow up. Wrong list. Right. Well, you made me angry. Wrong list. There is another list. So if we're blowing up and getting angry and breaking stuff, that's the list that's dominating our lives. Or selfish ambition, always having it your way, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness. Just think about it. How can we have great relationships if we're always drunk? Hmm. You're not in your right mind. You're As a matter of fact, when, when our families, we were cool until we got all together and got drunk. Then when everybody got drunk, the fights began. I used to sometimes hate going to our family get-togethers because everybody, especially on Christmas, this was the time. Right. We'd get together and everybody's salsa dancing, all that, and then they started bringing the drink in and I knew, uh-oh, things are going to break it's loose in down. this place. And then there'd be a fight in the front yard. I mean, that's, that's what happened with our crazy right. family. And, and the reason was this list does not produce healthy relationships. Right. This list is a relationship destroyer. 
But thank God there is a second list. And it's called the Holy Spirit list or it's called the fruit of the Spirit. And these are relationship builders. Um, look at Galatians 5, 22. Read that for a uh, Sure. Uh, honey. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Okay, so the Holy Spirit produces this, this list. This list. Every believer has the potential to produce this list. Has now, the choice. We have a choice. We could walk in the flesh or we could be Holy Spirit led. Let's look at the list. Okay, the first one says love, joy, peace, patience. That's on there. You can do it through Christ. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And there is no law against these. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed their passions and desires on, of their sinful nature on the cross. And they crucified him there. So you've, you've nailed, if you're a believer, it says that you have nailed the old list, the old desires, the old way of mm. living. You've nailed that on the cross. So guess what? It's, it's not even there anymore. The fruit of the Spirit is your option. And he, this, it says the Holy Spirit is the one that produces that within us. So we can do it through Christ. Right. And it's more than a learning thing. It's actually a producing thing. And, 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 and the question I had my, asked myself is, well, how do I produce? How do I produce the fruit? And God says, you don't produce the fruit. He goes, the Holy Spirit produces the fruit. Then the next question I asked, I asked the Holy Spirit, well, how do I activate it? He goes, better question. How you activate the fruit of the Spirit is by choice. Say it with yes. me, by choice. Choice. So tonight what we're going to find out that relationships are all about choice. So I need to make a choice, make a choice that the first list is not going to dominate my life. I'm going to make a choice that the first list I'm going to, I'm going to crucify on the cross. What that means is I'm going to be done with that list. And the question is, is it possible to walk in the Spirit. Is it possible for the Holy Spirit to produce His fruit in our lives? Yes, but it's still a choice. choice. You know, and I see Lisa, and I, I believe Lisa, you know, at home, where I'm with her, I'm with her all the time. And what I see is her living out definitely list number two, the relationship builder list, the Holy Spirit list. I see that. And, and I mean, and and I don't know if she sees it in me a little bit. Yo, you see it I in me? Do. Okay, yes, good. You're the best. Honey, I'm, but this it. message is speaking to me first. <laughs> you know, but the idea, the idea is we do have a choice. Yeah. As a believer, there's no excuse. And that's why I said last week that I really believe you could bring two complete strangers from different nations, different languages that are believers, right. and they could have a healthy yeah. relationship with the only thing in common they have is God. Wow. Because what they could do is choose to do this. Choose to crucify the, the old list. I'm done with that list. And they can choose to be led by the second list. Yes. If marriage, married couples or people, believers, would just allow the second list, choose the second list, right. the Holy Spirit will produce it for you if you would just choose it. Relationships, all the relationship problems come from this, the first list. That's and that's it. So if we learn how to walk in the spirit, this will have healthy spirit-led relationships. Right. Yes. So good. Um, we're going to go to key number two. And key number two is about forgiveness. And so we only have two choices on this subject. It's either hold on to a grudge, hold on to unforgiveness, right? Or forgive, right? Hmm. Forgive. Right. And again, it is a choice, right. right? So only two options and it comes, it, this is how we treat, this is how we treat one another, especially when we feel that we have been mistreated. Unforgiveness and, and bitterness, forgive and be kind and merciful or our choice will be, our choice will determine our outcome, right? So either it's, it's your forgiving or you're holding on to the grudge. And either it's your being kind or you're being offensive. 
and you're, be, you're holding on, right? Is that right? Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Now I have a story about this. I'm gonna, actually, I'll tell the story before I read the, the scripture. So um, when Marco and I, when we were seeing each other before we got married, um, we used to fight a lot. We were on that first list a lot. And I remember one day, I, I had my Bible open, and it was right next to me, but I wasn't, I wasn't at that point, I wasn't reading the Bible, because me and him were just arguing back and forth, back and forth. So I'm getting frustrated, I'm getting tired of this arguing. And I take a glance down at my Bible, and these words pop out, like pop out of the Bible, and they hit me. So what was happening at that point was God was speaking to me. And this is the scripture that, that I read, and he spoke to me, so Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. It says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, and God is so good, he tells us what to get rid of and then what to replace it with. He's a good God. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. And so this was something that, that was happening at this moment. We were bitter. We were rage. We were in anger. We were saying harsh words and, to each other. And I was like, God, I'm not acting anything like what your word says. I'm not, I'm not even acting like this. And I had to make a choice. Am I going to be able to forgive him and carry on? Not, not be led by the way he was acting, but be led by what God was speaking to me, right? And so forgive means to let go. Do not discuss anymore. Give up a debt. Give up a debt. Um, so there may be some of you out there that you may be thinking, oh no, mm -mm, no, I can't forgive. You don't know what they did to me. I, it's just, no, it's impossible. They hurt me so bad. You just don't even know what I'm going through. And I would say, Pastor Marco, what would you say to somebody that, that is in that position right now? Like, I just can't forgive. There's no way. Well, you know, the, the, the Christian protocol is always to forgive. Mm. You know, I want to read another scripture. It's Colossians 3.13. It says, be tolerant with each other. <clears throat> Excuse me. If someone has a complaint against anyone, forgive each other. So what's the option? <coughs> Excuse me. Is to what? Forgive each other. So God gives us an option to forgive. He doesn't give us an option not to forgive. So this is where we're at. When we choose not to forgive, we choose to be under the leadership of the person and under the mastery of the person that hurt us. Wow. And there's a problem there. And if, and if we don't forgive, the, go, the scripture goes on to say, God won't forgive us. Wow. What he's saying, if you're under the mastery of the person that hurt you, they're controlling your emotions, they're controlling your attitude, they're controlling your response. I can't be your Lord. But if you would forgive, then it was, this is what I'll do. I'll be your Lord, I'll forgive you, and I'll set you free. But there's no double standard. What I mean by that is, if we choose not to forgive, we're also choosing to hold on to our grudge. And we're saying is, that person deserves to pay for what they did to me. And God says, wait a second. That's not what I did for you. I paid the price for everything you did wrong. And if I gave you what you deserved, then it would be punishment. And you'd be separated from me for eternity. So what I want you to do is give the same forgiveness that I gave you. And then I'll judge you by the standard that you dish out on somebody else. And what God is saying here, if you choose not to forgive, you're going to be under the law. And that means that when you stand before God, there's only punishment waiting for you. That's a big deal. If you choose to forgive, you're going to be under mercy and grace. And I'm just choosing to be under mercy and grace. So forgive so God can forgive you. Forgive so you could be free. Forgive so you could have an established relationship with God. Right. And there's another um, insight here. Unforgiveness not only separates us from each other, but it also separates us from God. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. 
And we, we, can treat, we can't treat others with one standard and then expect God to treat us with another. We live by the law or grace, and we will be judged by the law or found guilty. And or choose, again, choose, it's a choice. Choose to receive the grace that God has given us and declared us right in his eyes. Matthew 6, 14 and 15, it says, If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is a big deal. And again, it is a choice. You know, the, the scripture here is saying, okay, you could forgive and be forgiven. You could forgive, uh, you could choose unforgiveness and not be forgiven. You could choose to forgive, forgive and be kind and merciful. You could choose not to forgive and become bitter and vengeful. And, and what we're learning here is if I choose to not forgive, I become a bitter person. If I choose to forgive, I become a kind person. Yeah. So we start realizing it's not just a choice that you make, it's a character that you become. Yes, yes. So that's the dangerous right. thing about choosing unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. You start developing a bitter spirit. And that's why you run into some people that are totally impatient, always angry, always edgy, and they're bitter. They no longer could smile because unforgiveness will rip you off of yeah. your joy, will rip you off of peace, will rip right. you off of relationships, it'll make you super lonely, but then you're becoming something you were never created to be. Right. Today, someone needs to get set free from bitterness yes. and rage and all that yes. stuff, yes. and you're one choice away. Forgive. So we've been talking about choices. The first choice was, as a believer, am I going to have the sin nature list? Or am I going to make a choice to activate the Spirit of God so it could produce the fruit of the Spirit? Or am I going to choose, number two, am I going to choose to forgive and hold on to a grudge? I mean, no, not forgive and hold on to a grudge. Or forgive and show mercy and be kind. I'm choosing who I am becoming. Just right. think about it. Right. No one is worth that. Be careful that your hater doesn't mess with your character and actually when you hate someone and you don't forgive them you start showing their attributes instead of reflecting God's attributes right, the right. more you hate someone the more you become like them wow. have you ever seen someone hate I hate I never want to be like my mom I never want to be like my dad I hate them and then you find yourself you see you're them just I go like you're them. just like your mama Right. You're just like your daddy. Because when you, when you take on that unforgiveness, you're taking on the wrong character or the right. wrong image. And this is what happens when unfor unforgiveness is not just a choice. It wants to take over your personality. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So when I choose to forgive, this is what's happening. I'm letting the Holy Spirit take over my yes. personality. Yes. And now I become like God. And I right. start experiencing the love and the flow of God in so my good. relationships. Right. Me and Lisa, our relationship can become, more, can become bitter or it can become kinder and gentler, more loving. It is a choice. The moment Lisa chooses not to forgive me, she becomes bitter and our relationship becomes what we are. And I always tell people, you know, you don't have, I don't think I married the right person. No, you're not being the right person. Wow. Because anyone can be, I want you to get, anyone could be the right person and anyone could be the wrong person. That's but right. it's a lot, a lot of this has to do with choices. Choices. So when I choose, okay, God, I want to be the right person, produce your fruit in my life, I will. And that's why I always tell people, I, I, I get married couples come in or people arguing. I go, you know the difference between me and you? I think different. Lisa thinks different. If you thought like we thought, think, you could have the relationships that we have. If I choose unforgiveness, like you're choosing unforgiveness, me and Lisa would have the same marriage you have. If I choose the first list and just say, well, that's just the way I am. I'm, I'm like that. All the Garcias are like that. That Garcias, we're just tough and rough. No. That's your first list. Thank God you could be born again and get a second list. Yes, yes. And because we could get a second list, we could have different results. Forgive or not to forgive? Forgive. Right. Okay. Right. 
hold on to bitterness, rage, anger, and hard, hurtful words, or let them go, be kind, be gentle, be forgiven. Choice. We have a choice. We can choose to have healthy relationships right now and for 2021. Someone needs to. Yes. I, I believe someone's listening to this. I said, man, my wife needs to hear this. I understand she does. You need to hear it too. Right. Right. And All speaking right. and speaking about choice, I want to tell you, if you're trying to make that choice, well, I can't, I, I just can't choose. I know I understand. Guess what? It's not about feelings. Your no emotions cannot lead you. They cannot direct you because they will take you astray and take you the wrong way, take you to that first list. It's about a choice as we were talking about. It's about a choice. You have to choose to say, I forgive him, her, what it, and I forgive him for this or that. Choose, because it's not about a feeling. And when, when I was in that position, when we were arguing and God was speaking to me and I said, God, that is not how I'm, I'm not acting nothing like your word says. At that point, I had to make a choice. To be I had to make a choice to say the right words, to be kind, and to, to go by the second list. So it's all about that choice. Awesome. All right. Key number three. Are we going there? Yeah. All right. Key number three is communication. It's so, so key. Yes. Key number three is so key. <laughs> and, and this is the thing about communication is I can't be thinking something and expect him to know. He is not a mind reader. You're not a mind reader. You're not a mind reader. I'm not a mind reader. And so we need communication so that we can express what is going on. Is that right? And so no one is a mind reader. And if our expectations are not met, then this is not fair to hold that person, hold it against them. So just because you didn't know, now I'm all mad at you because you didn't know. Know yeah. what? Right? He didn't know. Guess what? He didn't know. But I should have communicated. I well, you should have known. Him. That's that's not, that. Well, you should have known. known. You should have known the right thing to do. It's only obvious. Don't you have any common sense? These are conversations we're right. having, and we're just expecting people to know. To know. And that's just bad communication. It is. You can't assume that they know just because you know. The false expectation. And, and they might not even be thinking about what you're thinking about. And so, uh, so how do we solve that? Very simple. Communicate, communicate what you desire. That's it. Right. Communicate what you want to communicate. And what you don't, there's a quote, what you don't discuss comes back to blindside you. So healthy communication leads to healthy relationships. Right. All right. Great communication. So when we use great communication, great communicators use words that are helpful. Okay. Our words should build people up and not tear them down. Our words should be encouraging, kind, nice, not discouraging. Our words should be full of grace and not full of judgment and criticism, right? Ephesians 4, 29, I love this scripture. It says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say, it's again, a choice. Those things that you say, those things that you choose to say, let everything that you say be good and helpful so that your words, your chosen words, will be an encouragement to those who hear them. So we have a choice. Now, this is the thing that I think is what am I about to say going to be helpful, beneficial? Is it going to lift somebody up? Is it going to build them or is it going to tear them down? Is it going to be harmful? And so if my answer is not the first one, then sometimes, you know what I have to do? I have to make a choice to shut up and don't even say the words. Because once I say those words that are harmful and that, that bring somebody down, what it brings is corruption and death into their life. And it tears them down. And, I, and that's not led by the Spirit. That's that first list, right? Um, helpful means to uplift, to build up, to edify to act of one, the act of one who promotes another's growth. You're cheering them on. You're helping them grow. You're promoting them in, a, in Christian wisdom, happiness, holiness, 
to instruct or benefit, especially morally or spiritually. So you're the one with those words that are uplifting, that are encouraging, that are kind. And I will say even correction can be uplifting and it can be building if it's said in the right way. Right? Is that right? So we're, we're, covering, we're covering communication and there's three attributes of a great communicator. She just covered number one. Great communicators use words that are helpful. They use words that are helpful. And in the scripture, again, choice. Say it with me, choice. choice. Don't use foul or abusive language. Choice. Now, well, what about, wait, what about when I'm really mad and angry? The scripture says, don't use foul or abusive language. We still got a choice of the words that we're using. If we're using, I want to have great relationships, but I want to be able to say whatever I want to say. I want to speak my mind. I want to give no. my two cents. The scripture says, don't use foul or abusive language. So if we're cussing and we're using words that are abusive, there's no way it's going to produce healthy relationships. Right. So it's a choice. Honey, I'm no longer going to cuss at you and abuse you with my words. My words, instead, I'm going to choose this. As soon as I choose, the Holy Spirit empowers me to do it. It says this, let everything, everything, not some things, everything, everything. you say. Everything? Everything. Lord, help us. Yes, help us. It didn't say some things. I'm talking country now. Everything. Everything. <laughs> when I mean everything, I mean everything. Even when you're mad. Everything you say. What? Be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Our words, everything we say should be good and helpful and be a encouragement for those who hear them. Wow. I think we need to start really thinking about how we're talking. Need to, because people, it doesn't say let some things. It says let everything. And the word helpful, it just means uplifting. So that's the first, first step. You want to say something? Some people need to go on a word fast. Right. Like sometimes I, I, well, yeah, I mean, we have to choose our words. But sometimes you just have to, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. I used to say that. I'm not going to say that. And we have to choose to fast those words and say no. No. Not, not only not say it, we got to sometimes not type it. Oh, type it. Because our words, even like on Facebook, are so divisive and right. so destructive. And some of us are so tempted when you hear something juicy, I got to jump in and get my opinion. No, you don't. It's fleshly. It's the first list. It's causing division, list. division and dissension. Stay wow. away from it. Yes. Everything you That's say, good. let it be That's encouraged. Let it be building. Let it be helpful. So the first attribute of a great communicator is that they use helpful, helpful words. words. The second attribute of a healthy communicator is they are great listeners. Um, in James 1.19, it says this. Understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to hear. And that means be careful and thoughtful listener. Slow to speak. A speaker of carefully chosen words. And slow to anger, patient, reflective, and forgiven. For the resentful, deep-seated anger of a man does not produce the righteousness of God, the standard of behavior which he requires from us. So the scripture says we should be quick to listen or hear and slow to speak. Those that aren't effective communicators, that's what they're doing. First of all, they're not listening to what the other person is saying because they already think they know what they're ready to say. Right. Like, you don't even need to say it. I already know what you're going to say. So let me give you my rebuttal before you even speak. So what they end up doing is they're not listening because they think they know what the person's ready to say. And while the person's speaking, they're already just thinking about what I'm ready to say. Really bad communication. Not a I good run listener. Into this, I run into this all the time in counseling. Um, the, the wife will say, she gives her side, then, then I'll say, okay, did you just hear what she said? And then the husband will say, well, uh, yeah, I heard what she said. What she said was, I go, and then he starts speaking. I go, she didn't say nothing like what, what you're saying wasn't even in the conversation. Where did you even get those words and thoughts, ideas from? 
The idea, he never listened to what she was saying. He was jumping to conclusions, never listened to her. And then I have to say, okay, let me tell you what she just said. That's true. All she wants is more time with you. Well, I didn't hear that. I heard totally something different. I heard that, that she um, trying to control my life. I heard that she doesn't want me to, she doesn't want me to have fun. I heard that, that she's against me and she hates me. That, that's what I heard. She don't want me to hang out with the guys. Yeah, so whatever. If you start thinking before you start listening, you'll never understand what's being communicated. Before you speak, listen. And then maybe we could start something like this. So what you're saying is, mm, and then repeat good. it. And then the, the, the other person could say, you know, that wasn't what I said, but what I really wanted to say was this. Oh, okay. So what, you're, what you said was this. He goes, exactly. That's what I said. And we need to slow it down. Slow down our communication. Um, right. Let's go to uh, attribute number three of a great listener or a great communicator. <laughs> great communicators quickly address any issues that may come up. The health of an, any organization or relationship is determined by how quickly we deal with our issues. And great communicators are also consistent communicators and they don't leave gaps or time gaps. And want me to go read here, Matthew 18, 15 through 17. And it says, if a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell him. Work it out between the two of you. If he listens, you've made a friend. If he won't listen, take one or two others along so that the presence of witnesses will keep things honest. And try again. Okay, so first take, first take it up with the person that you have an issue with. And then if that didn't work, then take a couple other people with you to, to, to keep it honest, right? And so then it says, try again. If he still won't listen, tell the church. If he won't listen to the church, you'll have to start over from scratch. Confront him with the need for repentance and offer again God's forgiving love. So what I get here is you tried this way. You tried it. You tried to hash it out between you two. Then you tried to bring a couple other people along just for support and say, hey, let's work this out. Then you went to the church and if it still didn't work out, ah, that's it, forget it, right? No, that's not what it says. It says you start again from scratch and then you go back to that brother and you still try to bring restoration and try to bring that repentance back and forgiveness, right? And you go back to that person in love Again, you start all over. You don't forgive up on, you don't give up on them. Right. And great communicators, they can quickly address any issue they, that may come up. Um, the health of an organization or relationship is determined by how quickly we deal with mm. issues. Yeah. Um, so what that means is, let's just say you have a problem with someone um, in the morning. And they did something, you wrote that, you wrote that, that thing they did. That, that just that gets on my nerves. That was the wrong thing to do. Um, they need to fix that, and you write that down. But you don't address it. Then three days later, they do something else, and you, ooh, there's another one, and you write that thing down. But you never address it. Mm. A month later, they do something else, and oh, that's a straw that broke the camel's back. I am done. They did it again. And you have this long list of the issues. But this is the problem. Your relationship is becoming more and more unhealthy not because it couldn't be fixed, it was never addressed. And the longer time that we take between an offense or confronting something, the more unhealthy the relationship becomes. Because this is what I've learned. If we don't fill the gaps in with communication, Satan will fill the gaps in with lies, bitterness, and anger. And some of us are really angry and upset. And this is the reason. We haven't dealt or confronted our issues. We're sweep, sweeping them underneath this rug right here, hoping they go away. They'll never go away if they're not addressed. So the health, of, so that's called a time gap. So you want to get rid of time gaps in your communication. That means if there, that's why the Bible says, do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. What he's saying is, 
before the day's over, make sure you handle your stuff that day. And, and if you keep just hoping it goes away, put it underneath the rug, you're allowing the enemy to villainize right. everybody in the relationship and right. no one's actually getting help. And I wonder how many relationships they've just given up on each other because they just refuse to deal with their issues in a timely right. manner. Wow. And there's another gap, and we'll call this a communication gap. And what I mean by that is, these gaps cause unhealthy communication. A communication gap is something like this, is that you and your wife discuss, um, we're gonna show up, at, uh, what time you get off work, honey? Well, I'm gonna get off at five, and, and then the wife says, well, you know what, I'm gonna have dinner waiting for you at five o'clock, can't wait for you to come home, I'm ready to go. Now, what happens, something breaks out at work and you have to work an extra two hours. That's not the major problem. The major problem is that you, you forgot to communicate or you refuse to communicate or you fail to communicate, honey, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna be two hours late, we had an emergency at work. That is a communication, that's communication. But if you don't do that, you show up three, eight o'clock, your wife is upset. There he is. There's no reason for her to be upset if you would have just got the communication gap filled in with communication. Another thing, I promise you, I'll call you back today and you don't call back. Communication gap. Someone's texting you. Three or four, five, six days later, you text them back. And it wasn't because you, it's just, you just chose not to. Communication gaps. And the longer those communication gaps happen, this is what's going to happen, the more room there is for dysfunction, lies, anger, resentment to fill those spots. So right. we learn about communication. Right. Number one, if you're a great communicator, you use words that are helpful. Yes. Number two, if you're gonna, you wanna be a great communicator, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna be a great listener. Right. Number three, if you're gonna be a great communicator, you're gonna deal with your issues quickly. Great communicators deal with their issues what? Quickly. And you know what happens? It becomes way easier to deal with a small problem than create a huge problem. Because when it's a huge problem, everybody's emotionally charged and angry, and it becomes a way bigger issue than it needs to be. So today we've learned about choices. We can choose, number one, we can choose to let the Holy Spirit lead our lives. And we also can choose to have the Holy Spirit in our lives. It is a choice. Number two, we can choose another key to healthy communication is forgiveness. I can choose to hold on to a grudge, or I can choose to forgive and let it go. I could choose to become bitter, or I can choose to be kind, loving, and considerate. Number three, about communication. I can choose which words I'm going to use. Am I going to use bitter, harsh words? Or am I going to use words that are helpful and build people up? That's still going to be a choice. I could make a choice to be a healthy listener. I got two years, so I'm going to give twice as much effort to listen as to speak. Listen to what they're saying. Make sure they understand what I'm saying. And I'm also going to choose, when it's all said and done, to be a quick communicator. That means if there's something, I'm not going to leave time gaps or communication gaps. I'm going to do my best to fill in those gaps. How many learned something today about communication or relationships? And what we're going to do is work on this because it takes some work. But the first step, let's go to the first verse and we're going to end it with this. In Ezekiel 36, it said this, that I'm going to give you a new heart. And I'm going to put my, uh, give you a new spirit. And, <coughs> excuse me. And God is saying here that he's going to help us be everything he's called us to be. Yes. He's going to give us everything that we need with his rela our relationship with him, to have a relationship with him and have a relationship with others. Honey, what I want you to do is lead someone out there in a prayer of salvation so they can have a new heart and a new spirit so they can walk this thing out. Because without the Holy Spirit, we can't do this. That's right. We can't do it without the Holy Spirit. So if you're the one out there saying, I need the Holy Spirit to lead me, to guide me. I've, I can't do this on my own. Then I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. And just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for trying to do it my own way. I want to be led by you. I want to make right choices. I believe that you died and you rose again for me, that I can have new life, a new heart, a new spirit, that I don't have to live the way that I've been living. Lord Jesus, forgive me. 
I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I will live for you the rest of the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just said that prayer and you meant it, this is the reality. God's given you a new heart with new desires. Giving your heart the sensitive. And you say, man, it's just been so hard because I've gone through so much. And today's your day to make that choice. I'm done being hard-hearted. I'm done being bitter. I'm done being angry. Jesus, save me. And if you said that prayer, God is going to fulfill his part. He's giving you a new heart with new desires to make us sensitive again, gentle again, kind again. And then he's going to produce, he's going to give us a new spirit to produce Jesus qualities in every single one of us. We can do this with the presence of God. I, you know, I, I remember, and we're going to pray right now, but I remember when, um, as I grew up, I, my father was pretty rough. And, and, and people asked me, you know, Mark, were you, are you like, will you ever get bitter and angry with your dad? My mom really saved me from that because she told me, Marco, he's not a Christian yet. Since he's not a Christian, he don't have the ability to love like you can love. Just forgive him. Give him a break. Let it go. So when my dad would act up and maybe put me down and call me names, and I felt like it was abusive sometimes in the verbiage, I would go back and say, well, he doesn't know Christ yet. He doesn't have the second list yet. He can't do it. And what it caused me to do is be forgiven and I never got bitter because my mom really taught me you don't have to let yourself get bitter. You can go ahead and forgive. And maybe there's some people in your life today that you're holding them accountable to a standard that they, they could only live out with the Spirit of God. They're not even believers yet. And they need God. And they need to see the love and the patience of God in you so they could begin to desire that in their lives today. So I pray that today in this season, don't get short, don't get angry, don't be impatient because you don't have to. You can walk in the Spirit and, the, and make a choice. And the Holy Spirit, as a believer, can produce the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. Let's become ge more gentle, more kind, more patient. And we can do this through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's have some healthy relationships in the church, in your home, in your marriages, in your workplace. Forgive them, like Jesus said. They don't know what they're doing and they don't have the ability to do it. But you as a believer do. We love you so much. I was so grateful that me and Lisa were able to just spend a little time with you talking about relationships. We've been married now for 31 years and, 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 and this is the truth. Our relationship gets better and better, better every and single better. year. We're maturing. We're not perfect, but we are experiencing a healthy relationship and we are succeeding. And I love this, what God did for us. He can do for you because she didn't grow up in a home that had all relationships all together. And I really didn't either. But with God and His Spirit, we can do this. So this is what I want to do. We're going to dismiss right now in a second. But I also want to do is just pray for a few moments. I really believe that we should end in prayer. If, if there's any, any prayer requests that you have, right now would be a good time to put those prayer requests in. I want to just pray just for a few of them. And the reason I want to do that, this is the reason. Because as we're praying for one another, we're becoming aware of what everybody's going through. And you say, whoa, first of all, I'm not the only one going through it. And second of all, man, I didn't know they were going through it. Let me pray for them. Let me intercede for them. So if you have a prayer request and say, Pastor, that's me. I do have a prayer request. What I want you to do is send it in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray while you're sending it in. Father, I lift up each person out there. And Father, those that are having marriage problems today, I'm asking you, Lord, to make, give them a new heart. Today, give them the, your Holy Spirit. Father, that today will be a time of repentance where we say, I'm done. I'm done living a life of anger, frustration, sexual morality, selfishness, dissension, anger, wild parties, drinking, drunk. I'm tired of it. I want to live a new life. And I want to be, I want to have, I want to be loving. I want to have some joy. I want to have some peace. I want to be kind. I want to be gentle. I want to have some self-control. And I can't do that without you. So I'm asking for a miracle in some marriages today. That today would be Miracle Wednesday for someone. 
Miracle Wednesday for someone today. Uh, there's a D Dolores Hernandez. She, she said, pray to be healed. Pray for healing for myself and my husband and to be healed from COVID and anxiety. Father, we lift up Dolores and her, her beautiful family. And we just thank you, Lord, that we're praying for her. Heal her. Heal her husband. And, and heal her of anxiety, too. Spirit of anxiety. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. But pray about everything. Spirit of anxiety, we command you to go. And we ask you, Lord, for healing. That she get quick healing. And as she's healed, she will use her story and her healing to serve you with all of her heart. Lisa, read Alexander the second one. Castro, pray for the Castro family that the relationships in this family will be healed. Yes. Thank you, Father, for the Castro family right now, God. We pray that your Holy Spirit would go, would move in this family, God. And Lord, that they've heard the word tonight. And Father, that they would go by the second list, by the fruit of the Spirit. They would be led by your Spirit, God. Bring healing into this home and restoration, Father. We thank you now in yes. Jesus' name. Yes, we agree. Uh, Maria Cardenas, for the for Sesma family, their marriage and family to be restored and re renewed. Here we go, another relationship thing. That's the most pain in the world is a relationship pain. Father, we ask for the Sesma family. Father, restore their marriage. And we know this, as they get restored with you, their family will be restored. Their relationship, their marriage will be restored. So I thank you, Lord, that you will, Father, your love will go in and bring father give them a new heart with new desires fill them with your holy spirit when you're when we're full of the holy spirit we're full of love the love of god that makes all relationships work Yes, also for the Montes family, restoration in their family, God. We thank you, Father, that, Lord, they have heard your word tonight, God. You would bring healing, restoration in this family, Lord, God. I thank you, Father, that your spirit would go in and touch them. Lord, that they would begin to choose their words. They would become good listeners, God. They would become good communicators. And, Lord, they would most of all let the Holy Spirit rule and reign and lead in their lives. We're going to pray thank for Christy Lord. England. I want to request to pray for my dad. He has, his heart is in really bad shape. I pray that God would give strength to his heart. Thank Father, you, yes. we lift up Christy, England's dad, his papa, or papa. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you will heal his heart, strengthen his heart. Father, God, touch his heart. They will experience your presence and your power. Give him, Father, a new heart. Father, give him a spiritually new heart as well. Give him, Father, God, a renewed, Father, God, fire in his spirit, Father. And I just thank you, Lord. I don't know his, her dad, but I thank you, Lord. We put him in your hands. And most of all, that he will know you as his Lord and Savior and experience your presence in his life even today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank we'll go God. ahead and pray for one more. Go ahead, all right, for Michelle Chow. Healing of all hearts from offense for uh, um, forgiveness, reunification, restoration, unity, love like never before in my family. We are all separated and divided. Well, I cancel all separation and division now in Jesus' name. All offense, you have to go in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that your love is going to flood this family now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, they will make right choices and you will bring healing and restoration in the Chow family in Jesus' name. Thank you. You know, I know there's other prayer requests and, and tonight as, as we've prayed, um, there might show up on the, on YouTube or Facebook. And if you're on, pray for one another. Yeah. So I give you a, a, an assignment. Go on Facebook and pray for those requests that came in. I don't want one prayer request that came in to be left, to be left without prayer. So let's be a prayer family. We love you. We're getting ready for Christmas. And this, this, this Sunday, um, December 20th, we're going to give out gifts to families that are in need. Um, if you're saying, I want to register to actually deliver gifts do that today it's gonna I know it's a sacrifice but it'll be worth it and we'll make sure everything's safe wear your mask and we'll have them wear masks and all for sure and we're gonna drop off the gifts we're not gonna sit there and hang out for a long period of time we're gonna deliver the gifts with love and for those that have been thinking can I show up at church on Sunday uh, what I mean what, what are we doing for precautions this is what we're doing first our children's ministry after every service they're going through they're going and d d sanitizing everything in between services. Uh, um, all the teachers, everybody's wearing masks. All the kids wear masks, you know, really the whole time. And, and we haven't had one person in our children's ministry since we went open. Now one kid has gone COVID. That's awesome. You know, um, our, our services, what we do is everybody comes in with masks, temperature checks. 
and then we seat you and we practice social distancing. There'll be seats on both sides, two or three seats, I think three seats on each side. You sit down and at that point you could continue wearing your mask or if you decide, you know, I, I want to worship without in your, in your little safe area, you can do that. And then when we leave the building, we put on our mask and I thank God, you know, since we, you know, you know, re reopen and, you know, we're doing our best. Right now, we have no breakouts in our church right now. I haven't heard of one person that's got COVID at church. So it's a really safe place. You've been thinking about it. Um, and come if you want to. It's open. Christmas service, you could bring someone. If you're saying, you know, I want to continue being at home, that's fine too. The, the key is, let's just continue being connected. And the reason we're opening up is because there's a lot of people right now going through anxiety, a lot of depression, marriage problems. They need a personal touch. They need to be in this atmosphere. So we're bringing them in. We're praying with them. We're loving them. And they're getting the encouragement that they need. Not everybody could handle being all alone. I mean, some of us are real strong and we can handle it together. We've got a good support group, but there's a lot of people that don't. So we start hearing about the depression and people trying to commit suicide and, and all the things that were happening. And so we've had people come in here and they just kneel at the altar and they just start crying. I'm in the house of God and they need it so bad. And it's stopping them from committing suicide, going into some deep depression. It's healing their anxiety. And people are getting saved in the house of God too. So we got a lot of people coming to the house of God and being born again. So God bless you, church. We're in the season right now for a little bit, but seasons change. But while we're in the season, let's stay united at home, be united here. This Christmas, let's do our best. Let's bring a special offering to the Lord to worship God. Let's all come invite someone into your circle to worship God and then maybe um, sponsor a family or or actually I'm going to adopt a family and I'm going to take them gifts we could all do that God bless you we love you remember this if God is for you there's no one could come against you have some healthy Christmas relationships love you guys so much yeah.